welcome to Vanadium. This is Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Sometimes material science seems to me like alchemy. How could the red and blue color in stained windows of churches be coming from tiny nuggets of yellow gold stuck inside the glass? Materials aren't always what they seem. Sometimes our senses can defy us. Often it's the sense of vision that's most susceptible to illusions and distortions. The everyday experience of relying on light to look at things can mislead us into incorrect and simplistic assumptions about the way chemicals, materials, and reality operate. A perfect example is gold. The yellow luster of gold is familiar to us all, something that's fascinated humans since prehistoric times when the first gold vein appeared in a rock. It didn't take human beings very long to figure out that gold could be more than meets the eye. Stained glass windows in some of the oldest churches were colored with tiny bits of pure gold that somehow generated rich red and blue colors. Many people find it very surprising that the chemical element gold is not necessarily yellow. Pure gold can be red, purple, and blue. There are chemical tricks used for hundreds of years that can transform the color of pure gold. It's not really about the chemistry of the gold. That isn't changing. This weird optical effect comes down to the shape of the gold whether it's smooth or rough, and whether the gold metal bits are small or large. To understand this, it helps to think about what light is actually composed of. Photons, little waves or ripples in the electromagnetic fields around us. A gold luster comes from a typical smooth gold surface, where white light waves or photons reflect off the metal, while the gold atoms there absorb just a little bit of blue light. That's why gold and copper appear the color they do. Light is reflected preferentially. The blue doesn't make it, so white looks orange, gold, and red. Not every metal does this. Most metals reflect all the colors back in the same way. They're equal opportunity with light. This is responsible for the conventional silvery luster to most metals like silver. On a rough or bumpy surface, things work a bit differently. Remember before when I mentioned light is composed of photons or waves? Under certain circumstances, when the bumps and ridges get to be as small as a wavelength of light, what scientists and engineers refer to as the nanoscale, something funny happens. Light is rippling waves of electromagnetic energy. The sensation of color is actually the brain's measurement of the physical size of these wave packets or photons. These waves have an actual length, but it's so tiny that it's difficult to conceptualize. Red light is actually a longer, bigger wave than blue light. Red is around 700 nanometers long, while blue is around 400. This is when things get interesting. Light can behave in strange and unexpected ways when it encounters features around this size. All waves work this way. In this range, the nooks and crannies on the rough surface and small clusters don't act like gold anymore. 400 to 700 nanometer size gold things of just about any shape act like they're different atoms entirely. These little nuggets take on a life of their own. These features dominate the metal's interaction with light. They act like light antennas and instead of letting the gold atoms reflect back most of the white light, the rough patches beam back just red or blue. If they're less than around 400 nanometers in size, they'll appear a deep red wine color, and if they get larger, they'll send back only a striking blue light. The gold won't look like a metal at all anymore. The earliest and perfect example of this can be seen in stained glass windows prepared since antiquity. Glassmakers were exploiting the weird quantum effects of materials before most people agreed the Earth revolved around the Sun. Dyes in organic chemistry didn't exist back then, so they had to be smart and work with what they had. Somehow, they figured it out. The craziest part of this story is this ancient gold technology is setting the groundwork for mind-blowing new gadgets almost beyond imagination. 
It turns out that confining light on small gold bits could allow scientists and engineers to twist, route, and manipulate it with enough control to build an actual invisibility cloak. This sounds far-fetched, but it makes sense. One of the biggest challenges to pulling something like that off is the limitation of the size of a light wave itself. The light needs to be confined to an even tinier packet than the photon, and without materials like this, it seems to be impossible. Light waves that get trapped in metal features are called surface plasmons, and plasmonics is all the rage in optics and physics right now. It's likely this technology is going to have an even more prominent place in society beyond church windows. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium. <laughs>